All right, welcome back to another video in my tower defense series where I teach you how to make a tower defense game using Unity's 2D game engine. Now, sorry for the hiatus between the last episode and this episode. Um, to be honest, have haven't felt that motivated. Uh, I've just been watching some YouTube and playing some Minecraft, but that's besides the point. Let's just get right into it. So, in the previous episode, we added the towers, where you can um, not yet play place them down but they will damage enemies and in this episode we're going to finish them up real fast and add them to point towards the enemies and also shoot little bullets so let's just get right into it the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your prefabs folder go to your basic tower prefab open it up in the prefab editor like so and what we want to do is you want to create a an empty game object and i'm gonna name this pivot and th so make sure it's in the center, which you can tell because if I take out the movement tool, it's right in the center. Or what you can do is just go down to your inspector while um, being clicked on it and just do transform, right click, and reset. That will just reset the transform to be at the center. So the next thing you want to do is under this pivot, you want to uh, find 2D object and sprite. Sorry about that. My phone went off. Um, so what you want to do is you want to add a new sprite, and then in your sprites folder, you will drag in your square. It's a bit big, but this supposed to be a barrel, so you want to size it down on the y-axis. That looks good. And then on the x-axis. Now, a barrel doesn't look like this. Now what we want to do is we want to move it on the x-axis to where it looks like this, so that it, it looks centered, so that what the edge of it is at the center if that makes sense and i'm gonna make this a little bit longer so just if you want to make it longer extend it and then just drag it towards the middle which is this center line and i want to give this a color i'm just gonna put it as gray that looks good could be a little bit thicker not that much i, th I think that looks good for now so now that so now that we have that I'm going to name this sprite uh, barrel, and I'm going to go out of the prefab now. So now I'm back in the game editor. Let's just see. Okay, we're right here. Sorry about that. Just need to know where I was. So now that we have the um, barrel in place, so when I drag it out, you can see that there's a barrel. We want to make it rotate towards the enemy. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script. And we're going to name it uh, Barrel Rotation. And we're just going to open up in Visual Studio. I want this open right here. Zoom it on in for you guys so you can actually read it. And we want to create two variables. Public Transform Pivot and Public Transform Barrel. Now this... They're, they're obvious. They're, this is going to be a reference to our pivot, and this is going to be a reference to our barrel. Alright, so the next one we want to do is we want to do public tower. Tower. Now, the reason why we can reference tower is because we have um, class inheriting, which in the previous episode I kind of talked about it, but basically we can just access anything with the tower script onto it. Uh, we can access it. So this this will work with almost any tower that we implement into the game. So, the next thing we want to do is we want to add our um, update uh, void. So that we can actually track the enemy. So the first thing we want to check is if tower is not equal to null. Just to make sure that this is actually set to something. And why does that look weird? It's because it was incorrect, sorry. And then the next thing we're going to do is if tower dot hold on uh what do we set this at that's why we didn't make this public so in your tower script make sure to set your current target to public and then in your barrel rotate barrel rotation script english make sure to just do this make sure the current target is not equal to null like so all right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to create a vector 2. And I'm just going to name this um, relative. 
And what's going to go in here is we're going to put the tower. Whoops. We need to put the equal sign first. Equals tower dot uh, current target dot position dot transform dot position minus transform. Or sorry, uh, pivot dot position. So this is just getting the vector that is relative um, to uh, the tower to the enemy. So it's just a vector going from the tower to the enemy. And if you don't know what a vector is, I'll hopefully remember to put a link in the description. But yeah, it just creates a vector 2 that is just pointing from the enemy slash tower to the other one. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to do float angle. And this is going to do... This is going to look like some alien math, but what we're going to do is we're going to do mathf.atan2, and then inside these brackets, we're going to do relative.y, relative.x, and then outside here, we're going to do mathf.rad2degree. Now, this may look like some alien code, and honestly, it kind of is. Um, I don't really understand what atan2 does. Um, it's a... I guess it would be counted as a trigonometric function, but basically what it takes in is it takes in the y component of a vector and the x component of a vector and um, relative to a global axis of angles i think it will output the angle between these two objects but not in degrees in radians so then we just have to multiply it by a um a a, a conversion number which is just a constant here mathf.rad2 degree you can see there it is a constant of 57.29 so if you just multiply any radian number by that number, you will get degrees. All right, that's pretty cool. So next thing we want to do is we want to set the rotation of the pivot point. So if we go into our Unity e Editor down here, I need to close that project. If we go into our Unity Editor, let the scripts compile. If we bring out our basic tower script and then go into the pivot, you will notice that on the rotation, we need to rotate it on the z-axis. You can see there's the x, which is the red, the y, which is the um, green, and the blue is the z-axis, which is the this motion, which is what we want to rotate it by. So if we go back into our script, we will create a new vector 3 and call it new rotation. And we're just going to set this to a new vector 3 which will have 0, 0, because we don't want to mo modify the first two um, axes. And then in the final one, we're going to do angle. And then all we have to do is set the pivot dot local rotation equal to new rotation. Like so. Whoops. Quaternion. Oh, Quaternion dot Euler. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put in our new rotation like so so now if we drag this onto our tower here now let's go into prefabs open it up in the prefab editor right here and if we just drag the script onto the basic tower you can see that now we have this we need to drag in the pivot drag in the whoop drag in the barrel and drag in the tower script and now if we just load up a game here. Oh, the tower is a bit off the screen. So if we just uh, take this. Whoa, whoops, rotate it. Let's use the um, standard move tool. I did some funky things to the rotation. Hold on, guys. Transform reset. There you go. Oh, much better. Hold on, why is... Whoops, I rotated the um, barrel. I'm just going to reset that bad boy to um, normal. Okay, sorry for that bit of an inconvenience. So if we just do this, we can then drag out our enemy script. And you can see our barrel tracks it quite nicely. So if I just take this, it will constantly track the enemy. So that's pretty cool. And the next thing we want to do is we want to add the shooting of the bullets for that extra little detail. So, 
I'm just going to delete this Tower Prefab. We are going to go into Scripts. We're going to go into Basic Tower. And, well, actually, in the Tower... Well, yeah, no, we're going to do it in the Basic Tower. So, in the last episode, when we wrote this script, you may have noticed I... Oh, no, I didn't. Sorry. So, you may have noticed that we did a Private Void Shoot. Whoa. Private Void Shoot. Now, what I'm going to change this to is a Protected virtual now what this means is the protected keyword means that this class the tower class and any of its um um i think it's the correct term is not inheritors but any class that derives from tower will also be able to use this and the virtual void also means that we can use the override function which means that we can make this code not run but actually make the or actually make this tower script do something different. So what we're going to do is inside our basic tower script we're going to do or sorry, private override. I just mean override. And what we're going to name this is we're going to override the shoot. And what and what you'll see is it creates this little function protected override void shoot base dot shoot now what this means is that this is an override but it will also fire the original meaning which in this case we do want to do we want to keep the original firing status all we want to do in this extra bit is fire a bullet so in order to fire that bullet we need a reference to that game object and what we're going to do is we are just going to go back into unity go into here and then just take out good old sprite right here and just resize it to what you would think a bullet should look like. Let's just resize it here. Well, let's just resize it here. I'm going to give it a nice yellow color, color. That's a bit orange for my liking. There you go. We have that bullet. And I'm just going to name this instead of square. I'm just going to name it bullet. And we're just going to drag that into the prefabs folder. And there you go, you can have it in the prefabs folder now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our Unity script. And when we shoot, we are going to create an, a new bullet. So just do game object, new bullet equals instantiate. Uh, just instantiate the bullet object. And then inside this basic tower, we're, all, we're also going to have references to the um, pivot point and the and a reference to the barrel we may not use the pivot but it's always good to have a reference and what we're going to do is we're going to do new bullet dot position or sorry dot transform dot position equals barrel dot position and then under that we're going to do new bullet dot rot dot transform dot rotation um actually we i don't know why i'm doing this down here what we can do is inside the instantiate function is actually plug all this data in so we can do after this bullet we can do um pivot sorry barrel dot position and then we can do um barrel or sorry pivot dot rotation and then we can just parent it to nothing right now because we can just do this so we have the object that that we want to instantiate the position we we want to instantiate at and the rotation of the pivot so if we go into unity here let that compile drag out a tower load in the game we have our map right here drag in an enemy oh i need to reference the bullet <laughs> whoops I need to reference the bullet. So we're just going to drag it in. Make sure to reference the pivot and all that. So just go into the pivot here. You need to scroll down. Go into pivot. And then drag in the barrel as well. Now since we're not in the prefab editor, make sure to go to your overrides button and click apply all. That will then apply it to the entire prefab. Click play again. And we should be able to. Now, as you can see, 
it does not um, go in any direction, but you can see that it spawned at the correct angles, which is very, very cool. So, the next thing we want to do is we want to make it go forward. And basically, what I'm going to do is do a bit of a cheeky move and just create a bullet script here. Just create a script called bullet. And what I'm going to do is... You can thank you. And what I'm going to do is just pry... That's not what I want. Private void update. Um, this... Sorry. Transform dot position plus equals transform dot forward times... I don't know, 2. And if we just drag that onto the prefab right here, so just go into the prefab editor, go back into your ships folder, drag the bullet script onto the object here. You can see it in the Unity um, inspector. Just drag that on, go back, go to your tower, make sure to drag it over to where you can actually shoot the enemy. Now, we're going to fix this in, in the next episode with all the sprites and stuff. And let's just drag in an enemy. So let's go down and look at the bullet. Hmm. It did not go forward. Let's see what is wrong. Actually, I just remembered. So transform.forward is actually on the z-axis. So, and if you notice, the z-axis is blue. But if you notice, our z-axis is isn't actually in use because this is a 2D game. So what we need to do is actually on the x-axis, which would be transform.right. So instead of transform.forward, make sure to do transform.right, and that should fix the problem. So if you're just going to play here, it's a bit inside the uh, ground if I do this in myself, but that's fine for now. You can see it shoots off. Okay, 2 is way too fast. We need to do like 0 0.25. That thing went really fast. So let that recompile here. I'm, I'm actually just going to get rid of the debug. Oh, I already did. <laughs> I'm very smart, I swear. All right, so if we go... I just opened my, my IQ software. Sorry about that. If we go into here, so many failures in this video, you can see that it travels very nicely. Now, it does not get killed by the um, enemy. Or sorry, the bullet does not get destroyed by the enemy. But that can be solved in the next episode. So the next episode is really just going to be uh, solving some issues that we have right now. And yeah. And then, the, and then the episode after that is going to be about the round controller. So I so this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys um, enjoyed. Um, not to sound greedy. If you like this and you want to see more content. Or you just want to learn to make a tower defense game of your own. Make sure to hit that like button and, and subscribe. So you don't miss the next video. And also, if, if you need help, make sure to join the Discord server. But as always, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.